Hello, welcome to the universe inside our mind. I'm Dr. David Jubb. We have a fabulous show today. It's all about getting along. Have you been getting along with the people that you love, the people that's in your life, uh, getting along with the people that you're working with? This is the show for you. It's all about getting along. It's very interesting that uh, everything that we perceive on the outside is made up on the inside of ourselves. So that be, might be nice to keep um, in memory as we go through this show today and that's wonderful to ever be aware of this in life that everything certainly when somebody's going da, 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 inside that is very much illusion uh, and even sensing things you'll become aware is illusion because everything that we perceive is made up inside our brain we have a set of rules which can cause me to interpret the world a certain way and this is called a paradigm uh, and so if somebody can have been operating from an old paradigm and then might less than have ease of ability to see the new paradigm, the old paradigm ha can have created a paradigm paralysis. It's amazing that we have this quartz watch in the background here because there's a great story about paradigms. There was this very uh, bright person who invented the quartz watch who came before uh, the Swiss company uh, with this invention uh, and showed their superiors this invention. Of course, their superior said, oh my God, this doesn't have any springs, this doesn't have any levers, uh, this doesn't have any cogs, what is this? And the person said, my God, this can keep time a thousand percent more accurately than everything, anything you produced up to this point. Uh, but because it didn't have a lever, didn't have a spring, didn't have cogs, didn't fit the paradigm of the old Swiss watchmakers, and they said, poof, they said, you know, this is not a watch. They didn't even get, care to protect the patent at all. Uh, and they said, go ahead and put it in the trade show. They had this very bright person put in the trade show. That very bright, bright person sat behind a desk at the trade show. Texas Instruments of Japan. Oh, Texas Instruments walked past uh, that table. Seiko of Japan walked past that table. Within three years, the switch with the Swiss, which were the number one watchmakers in the world, became number three they had to sack half of their workforce. When, as a new paradigm comes to be, it sets the old paradigm back to zero. It doesn't matter what you knew of the past, it's set back to zero. So it might be interesting to ever be aware that uh, we make up most everything, you know, inside quite a bit. And that might be aware, wonderful awareness uh, to have the inside of, and that's that things that are made up on the inside much more so than what you might have ever have thought. When someone has gone rat, 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 and they've described something out here, that I've described something out here, it might be wise for me to ever be aware that this is something on the inside of me that I'm describing. When I hear somebody uh, describing something that's occurring on the outside, I might be aware that this is this person's insight, uh, and this is this is, they're describing something that's made up from within them. Uh, and that anything that's said, uh, words are illusion, and that words only uh, can possibly be a reflection. It could be an accurate reflection of reality, but to the degree to which it is a reflection, uh, it is not reality. So uh, Annie and I call in whole brain functioning a platform teaching that we would reach before getting to the mount in whole brain functioning. And we call this teaching living in unconditional being. Unconditional being is where I've arrested all behavior that is to do with me wishing someone else to change. But I'll bet how many times have you had behavior where you wish somebody else to change? You wish something else would change out there. But this thought is illusion and it's a cause and effect violation because it's not possible for me to wish for somebody else to change. I don't have the power to be the person who's drawing the strings that is in this person. Uh, that's irrational for me 
to want something for this other person. But whenever we want, whenever I want, have wanted something for somebody else, and I participated in some behaviour that was about wanting something for somebody else, you know, for the most part, most people have to wash their energy field afterwards. They have to go out and have a good meal. They've got to go to the movies, go for a jog. Maybe they've got to listen to some music, read a book. Uh, got to go do something, visit a friend, or something. And then, and, and we might be doing many things, matter of fact, to wash our energy field because I was living in projection where I was wishing somebody else to change. So uh, we have these uh, seven levels of learning in whole brain functioning. Uh, and this fourth level, uh, which if you've watched previous shows, is all about no longer externalizing anything. The meaning of that, this is that we're finally ever aware that I am internalizing everything and it may as well, I may as well have a focus on what I can do myself rather than what you can do. Let me have a focus on what I can do. That makes a really great way to have relationship. Um, so that's a, so important that I have the ability to be able to pace people listening, uh, the intelligence of people listening. That is very important to be empowering because many times over someone can have language things and it causes people less than to feel empowered themselves. It can have perfectly taken power away from them. The presupposition uh, can be that the person is powerless or the person really doesn't have the gumption to make uh, a move on some situation. Uh, presuppositions are all statements which uh, are true if what's said is true, which, which a presupposition is unsaid, it's an unsaid statement. So uh, if I said the window is broken, the presupposition there is uh, that somebody must have broken the window. Um, yeah, uh, so that's a presupposition. So if I said the window is broken, presupposition is possibly that somebody broke the window which is unspoken. Presupposition of, I wonder what kind of change can occur today for you. Uh, that's, there are several presuppositions. First of all, maybe more than one piece of change can occur today. Uh, and uh, also that you're empowered to make these changes and that we'll work together. Uh, there are the presuppositions there. If I'd said, how can I help you? The presupposition is there, you need help, I'm going to help you. And that uh, can have been a disempowering f way of having communicated. We should do what we can to uh, pace the other person's equalness. We should do what we can to cause the other to have a feeling of equality and create egalitarianism. So I do what I can to get down to the other person's height as I can. I am from aware, let me use the same sort of voice quality as I can, let me frame things positively as I can, let me be ever mindful that I'm communicating to myself and this is me, so how would I want myself to communicate to me? I mean, we should ever be aware this is me there and that we ever are wishing to, to make sure that our language really is an empowerment rather than a disempowerment. So, you know, somebody could tell me uh, that I live in New York and they could tell me uh, that I do lectures around the country and things, uh, but for the most, what I know right here is that I'm in the presence of God and that everything else uh, that somebody could tell me is made up. That all I'm aware of is that I'm in the presence of God and this is me. So if we can have an attitude more where we're focused, oh my God, this is me, and how can I communicate to me? Uh, then it's more likely that we can be practicing this uh, question uh, that was posed, I wonder how I keep self company. Because uh, it all really is to do with how I keep company. How I keep myself company is how I keep company. Uh, so the more that it's possible to be me to be supportive in, the, in my languaging, in my being, to be more a supportive person, to be more allowing, to be more forgiving, um, to be soft, to be kind, to be gentle. 
to be living without demand. Uh, things have to happen in relationship more through grace and not through temporal import. Need to focus on accessing the other person's intuitiveness and, 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 and presupposing one's intuitiveness. That's so wonderful that we can communicate in a way that causes the listener to have choice. And that you can say, I wonder if, possibly you, we can, maybe you could, this is interesting, I wonder that you might consider. And we can frame things in a way with modal operators of possibility that allow the listener uh, choice. Because we love it when, when people can give us choice. We love it that somebody can be decisive and not pussyfoot, not be a flip-flopper. Like we say you're going to go and do something, that we have the ability to be able to do this because this is somebody who can predict the future. The person who's saying they're going to go do something but then they don't end up doing it is someone who's not really predicting the future very well. So we should be without demand uh, and it's amazing that uh, when we ask older people who are close to the end of their life, what would they do if they had it all over to do again? Many people say they, they say they would do much more than they have, or they did. They would go and do more things than they did. Most people say this, and then most people say they would be more allowing than they were. And that many of us, when we're asked, you know, in the later stages of our life, if we'd have this all over to go, do again, many people do say that they would be much more allowing. To be more of an allowing person not, and not to be uh, as demanding. To ever be aware that things happen more through grace and not so much through temporal import. To clear away the idea that something has to be fixed. To clear away the idea that something has to be said. To develop patterns of ways of communicating to each other that you have a smile you have just a way of nodding or being or uh, some behaviour which causes the other person to feel resourceful in themselves. So you have a little anchor which causes the person right across the room when you, when you do this or you do some motion, the other person is aware you're connecting with them uh, and they feel a sense of love uh, coming from you. So now, uh, some of these things I might share a little bit might seem a bit strange, like we're taught that we love other people and I love her or I love him or I love this and there's something else to be on the outside to love and that we should be completely loving without anything having to be present and this is loving self. It is projection that I can say that I love you. That's projection. I can't send energy to somebody, that's projection. I can't really love somebody, that's projection. We could be going around chasing love. Thank God I'm not chasing love. Thank God I'm not seeking approval. Uh, and thank God that I can be aware simply of more of an emptiness inside and that if love was to be expressed in some way, then I might say it's a vacuum and that inside this vacuum is there's this fluctuation of energy uh, that's this residium vibration which is a very very fine energy and as we feel this we can feel an orgastic rapturous nature which is our true self the mind and thought can have been dampening these feelings that we have inside which you can feel more when you've been in an older state or you remember being in an older state you may remember feeling this orgastic rapturous nature this is our natural state. The mind can have suppressed a lot of this and if it's a feel-good kind of a thing uh, then it's possible that it might, could be banned. Uh, so we're much more equal to each other than we are different. We should focus on more of what we agree with. Even if you disagree it's better to focus on agreement. What do you agree with? There must be something that you do agree with because we have rapport with each other as we find the things that we can agree with. Focus on framing things more positively and focus on sorting more for agreement rather than sorting from polarization like can't, won't, don't, shouldn't, must uh, and sorting for the opposite of what's said.
because many times over somebody can have been looking for what doesn't fit rather than what does fit. So let's focus on agreement because that creates more whole brain patterning with the people that we love. Let's clear away ourself. Let's imagine that you are this other person and imagine that you are communicating to you. This person that, who is you is communicating to you. And how would you have this person communicate uh, can give some wonderful insight into a way to be that can cause us to be more living in harmony uh, with each other. So I should not necessarily need something to out, be out here for, for me to be complete. I should develop more uh, patterns of being more self-sufficient and coming from self-sufficiency. Uh, we really need, I need to have a cup that I'm drinking from and you need to have a cup that you're drinking from. That both of us need to have cups that we're drinking from each rather than only one person having brought a cup and then everybody's drink, both are drinking out of this same cup. So responsible, responsibility and being responsible is ever being aware that it's my response to you that is the effect of the communication, what you've said to me. It's my response to you and it's your response back to me that is the effect of communication. So being responsible is ever being aware that it's my response to your, your behavior, my response to the stimulus that counts, not the stimulus. It's my response. As you communicate to me, my response to you is the effect of your communication. I'd like to know that you've communicated well to me. I'd like to be able to repeat this back in a way that, in paraphrasing it, causes you to have the insight, yes, David's got this insight. Um, and so we, should, we make support statements of each other when we're able to reiterate what the other has said and to pace this before we add something on to anything else. So I can have been completely living in projection. I can have completely been mind reading. Mind reading is where I go, you rat, 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 you think rat, 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 or you feel rat, 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 rat. Now, that's probably mind reading. Because how can I be aware that you're feeling this or you're thinking that? It's possible it's my interpretation. It's possible that it's my interpretation. Could be something else, but it's possible that it's my interpretation. When the other person would say, well, no, I don't feel that way, or no, I don't think that way, I absolutely should correct uh, my view immediately because it's more than likely that my view was living in projection. And this, uh, this last pattern what we, is what we call mind reading. And so mind reading is where I have said that somebody feels a certain way or they think a certain way, um, but they don't. That's mind reading. So lots of mind reading really is going on actually. Uh, lots of jealousy can occur as a result of making pictures in one's head and then when I see the person I've made all these pictures in my head about how things were or something and that can have influenced uh, my communication uh, in a manner that having a story inside is like a big old speck in my eye and it causes me to respond to everything around me uh, through having this speck. So when we clear away this speck in our eye, we become more empty and we have an empty fullness. When I, when I listen as I listen, as I feel, as I communicate, as I see, uh, as we connect with each other and I'm more empty of myself, it's more likely that it's possible for me to be more aware of what's going on with you. As I would have been going rat, 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 or dut, 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 and having internal dialogue while you were communicating with me, I only really more or less could have what you said in my second attention. Might not really have it in first attention at all. Uh, so let's make sure there's a gap. There needs to be a gap in the cloud bank for the sun to shine through at the top of the mountain to cause things to grow in the valley. And there needs to be this gap in this cloud bank so the sun can shine through 
uh, if there's not this gap, you know, like you're communicating something in the moment you finish, I go blah, 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 and I communicate something straight after, and there is no gap, typically that's an indication that there was internal dialogue. Uh, if, if you communicated something to me and straight away I'm communicating something back to you, then that's the general evidence possibly that I was in internal dialogue for some of that moment. So there needs to be a gap. Take some time. Don't rush. Uh, come in nice and easy. Ever be aware that your, as yours and my behaviour can have spilled over to others and then let's make sure that we're more responsible ourselves. Let's make sure that you're aware that emo energy and mo emotion, emotion, energy and motion is magnetic. Let's make sure we have our emotions in order. Let's make sure that I clear away all behaviour that was like a drunk monkey stung by a scorpion stuff. Let's make sure we can clear away all the babbling brook of petty emotion and not necessarily enter into any silliness. Uh, but of course it is amazing that someone can have a perfectly congruent, re congruent response from doing something themselves, but when somebody else does it back, it can be the very first time that person has an incongruent response with that behaviour. So we don't have any pattern, we're more way less. We're simply becoming aware of the patterns that we use um, and that does not necessarily mean I might not use a pattern and I, even though I've said frame things positively, if you went around framing everything positively, there's lots of people you wouldn't have rapport with because many people frame things negatively. They polarise, they sort for what doesn't fit and if you frame everything positively, it's possible for you less than to have rapport with this person. So. We teach everyone what these patterns are and we teach people to be more way less. Not having an, any way, but simply looking around at the ways of others that's excellent and adopting this. So the more empty one is of themselves, the more likely it is I can become and am a good servant. Because the more I would be having a thought or a concern about something that I needed for myself, how could I be more fully present uh, to serve you. So it's always up to the mature person, you know, to make amends. It's never up to the immature person. It's always up to the mature person. Find other ways to communicate too. Leaving a book on the table. Some uh, is a form of analogue sculpting rather than communicating like this. A person could read a title. Um, Sometimes the way that you're holding your face, uh, that's very important. Um, I worked with a couple uh, that brought me in because the wife had had a stroke um, and the whole family was really less than uh, able to get along with her and they brought me in to see if there was something behavioural uh, that I could figure out. Uh, and I figured out quite a few things. First of all, uh, the stroke that she'd had uh, left her with not much sort of sequencing ability. She had had a stroke more in the left hemisphere, which left her mostly with the right hemisphere. Uh, and so there was ways that she could communicate, we could communicate to her, and I noticed that the husband was communicating with the wife, and even though he really selected his words very well, he had a bit of a frown on his face. Now the right hemisphere is perfectly intact and can see the frown, and sort of isn't able quite to sequence things in the same way and so the communication predominantly the person was getting was the frown. The raising of the voice or the changing of the voice pattern uh, can be something also more read out by the right hemisphere causing a person to perceive things uh, even though someone might be selecting their language very well uh, they could have had a frown and um, and they could have language things in a way that was less than pleasant. So I taught this person, the husband, to, um, to, to clear, have a more of a smile on his face, to make sure he softened his voice, and that I let him know that the words he used were very excellent, and that if he did these two other things, 
uh, along with speaking in a little bit of a sing-song uh, that instantly this would change um, his wife and that she would have wonderful ability to be able to sense uh, things more so and lo and behold adopting these patterns he was able to communicate with her and the whole family learned that there is a way that they could communicate with her. Um, so I said, I've shared with you, uh, shared these few things about analogue which is other than the dialogue which is the way things are expressed because one can be very aware of language that they're using but they might be unaware of the way that things are being expressed. So do what we can to be supportive. Uh, the aesthetic is living most amongst us without habit. Uh, so be more without habit. Look around and see what you can do uh, to be a good servant because you, because uh, I am living most in the midst of you who is serving most. And as you are in relationship with the people around you, that's so very important that you are loving of yourself and that everything else is projection and that I have a focus on what I can do myself um, and I keep my focus on what my I can do. It's up to the mature person to make amends in relationship. It's never up to the immature person. Be more without making demands. Ever be aware that things happen more through grace and that focus on having more grace in our life rather than temporal input. So anyway, I hope these few things that I've shared with you today uh, cause you to live life more abundantly. And if that, this is the case, I say to you, hey, leave good tracks where you're going. I love you. Looking forward to catching up with you in the future. Stay tuned to the universe inside our mind. In the weeks to come, we've really got some great topics. Uh, look forward to catching up with you. God bless.